So uh, great to get to chat with you guys again for this season. Uh, it's been an absolute blast. Uh, and we're going to get into some spoilers. So to start off, uh, uh, okay. you guys got I'm married. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, before you even start, where'd you get that jacket? <laughs> <laughs> I got it from Hulu. Uh, it was a surprise. They they said they had a mailer for press. And I was like, yes, I don't care what it is. Just send it my way and opened it up. Uh, and I was like, oh, yes, <laughs> I get scroll? my own. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it is. It, it, it'll be nice when it's cold outside finally here so I can start wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yes, so you guys got married uh, in the finale, and it was a beautiful moment. It really was. Uh, and so I'm curious, you know, Seth clearly has had this show mapped out a lot. So how long have you known that you were eventually going to tie the knot? And what was your first reaction to when you heard that? Okay, Mark, you are so wonderful in letting me go first because you said ladies first, but I'm going to say husbands first. Okay. Uh, well, I, yes, I knew, I found out about all this, the whole arc, actually, for Isaac, in, you know, including the, the Kleisic arc, um, before we started shooting from Seth. You know, he does have it all mapped up. You're absolutely right. Um, so... Uh, what was that was great for me because I just I just thought wow this is a perfect way for Isaac's arc this season to to end you know um, and I was just kind of freaked out about how cool it would be to have a human uh, artificial intelligence marriage like you know it's that's that's taking that's what the Orville does isn't it it takes it just that little bit further that other shows wouldn't do and I thought that was really fun. Um, I did try to tell Penny all of this, but she wasn't hang, having any of it. She Part of her process that she doesn't want to know what's going to be happening to her character in the future, because you can't play that. And it's very good. It's a very good point. <laughs> that, well, that I, is good point. <laughs> I'm going to chime in. Um, like Mark said, I didn't know because I didn't want to know. And not just Mark, but so many people try to... Uh, give me hints and I just wouldn't listen. Um, wardrobe said, you know, we're gonna have to have a lot of fittings. I said, do I have a lot of changes? I'm not gonna be in my uniform. They go, oh, and they looked at one another and I said, whatever it is, do not tell me because I have not read the scripts and I don't wanna know. And Seth tried to tell me because he's really good at making sure you know what's going on. And I said, you know, you don't wanna tell me dude. So there you go. <laughs> I didn't know until we read it. And then when I read it, I went, oh my God, really? Really? Oh my, with Mark? Oh my God, I love it. So I'm very excited. I, because I was slightly worried because, you know, we've got some really heavy hitting stuff this season. And I, and particularly in the episode before it, Domino, isn't it? Um, where Charlie dies. And I, I, I was slightly worried that, it would feel a bit too light after all that. But it seems from, you know, looking at the, the reaction that it's kind of what everyone needed in a way, um, which is lovely. It's kind of, it's exactly the dessert everyone needed after the, the it was a great course, 10 course meal of this season, yeah. I would almost compare it to like going from Infinity War to Ant-Man, where you you have this dramatic ending and then, you, oh, you get a little palate cleanser before whatever comes next. I think I think that's what uh, the wedding episode really was for this season. Because, yeah. And so since you mentioned Charlie's death, I mean, that was something that I did not see coming at all uh, this season. I really thought she was going to be a major player going forward. What was each of your reactions to when you first learned that uh, she would be biting the dust? Well, um, again, because I don't read the episodes beforehand, um, I didn't know because I didn't want to know. However, Annie was, she, you know, she kind of like told everybody, well, you know, I'm only here for 10 episodes. So I'm thinking, who does that? Why? Oh, okay. Well, all right. So I knew something was going to happen. I didn't know what it was, uh, but um, it, it I, I was telling her the other day that the, one of the saddest moments uh, for me was the funeral um, and how each character was 
really up close and personal through the lens. And you got to see truly how that character affected, you know, the ship and whatever. And you cannot, when you're doing a scene like that, at least with me, you cannot separate um, the personal feelings as the, the actor drawing from, oh, wow. So, okay, baby doll won't be around. Mm. So, you know, you have something to draw from. So it's kind of sad. Mark, how about for yourself? Well, yeah, I mean, you need the drama, right? And it was such a brilliant stroke of drama, um, having her sacrifice herself for, um, well, for everybody really, I guess. Um, but, but specifically for Kalons and for Isaac. And, uh, you know, it, it was such a, it was such a clever way to tie up, um, tie up Isaac and her relationship, but also, um, you know, it, it, it projects Isaac into, into the decision in a way I feel to propose to Claire. Absolutely. You know, like, I mean, I think he's very much aware of how little time Claire has compared to him. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it motivates him to sort of get on with things a bit. Um, so yeah, I, I thought, I did know, <laughs> I did know early on um, with everybody else apart from Penny. Um, but uh, yeah, and I, I mean, I thought actually, you know, she's the first, She's the first sort of like identifying as queer in some way character uh, on the show, which was good. I think we could have pushed it a little bit further, but um, you know, when she's talking about her, um, the love of her life that dies, I thought that was, that was really important to have that on the show. Um, yeah, I think, I think her, her arc is really cool this season. And tied yeah. in so beautifully with, you know, everybody else's. Mark, I don't know if you will um, agree with this, but um, that particular episode 10, um, after going out and supporting the LGBTQ community and meeting those fabulous group, you know, uh, of people, I wanted to go and just watch the show again because it meant so much more to me. Mm. Um, after that, um, you know, uh, Charlie being the, as you say, the, the queer, the, uh, I, what's the appropriate, lesbian was what she was, or? I'm using queer as an umbrella term here. Um, so, but yes, but yes, effectively she could be lesbian or. Um, but it well. definitely affected a whole community of people who um, don't feel like their voice is heard. And um, that's one, incredible thing about the Orville. A lot of voices are being heard, finally. <laughs> I mean, even with Claire, the single parent voice is being heard. The older woman's voice is being heard. Uh, without Topa story, the LGBTQ community is being heard. Um, the different aliens, the different nations in the universe, that's like all the countries in the in, in the world on earth right now are being heard because everyone has a voice and everyone should be heard. And that I have to say is the beauty and the genius behind the Orville. Hmm. I don't know if that was your, even your question, Grant, sorry. <laughs> no, I love it. I, uh, I love where that went because that actually does kind of go into my next question, uh, which Mark and I were kind of talking about before, but, um, you guys are going, you're, you guys are on right now where we're seeing Star Trek enjoy a big resurgence and Star Trek, you know, has been known since the original for exploring many of these sociopolitical themes. And so I'm curious what it's like for both of you right now, you know, getting to explore these very timely, very uh, heavy, but also important themes through the lens of the Orville as Star Trek is also coming back. I think it's a responsibility if you have a, a, a platform um, that um, with, without pushing or beating people over the head, I think it's a responsibility to present it. Um, it's definitely not your job to answer the questions or to 
uh, judge people in any way, but the presentation is very important. And to be a part of that uh, platform is just so timely, especially for me right now. And um, uh, politically, um, we, we can't shy away from what's really happening and what's affecting people. Because after all, people, they only watch television to either go into some world so they can just have some peace because everything is just too chaotic for them, or they want to watch something so that they can get an understanding and get closer to this wonderful thing called real humanity. And so um, I'm really proud to be part of that, to be talent, um, to lend myself in any way. But what I refuse to do is to make fun of any group of people. Yeah, I just want to be real and honest. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed to be part of the Oracle. And Mark, how about for yourself? I disagree with all of that. <laughs> um, no, of course I agree with everything. That makes all makes sense. And yes, it is. I mean, you know, Penny and I were lucky enough to be in New York a couple of weeks ago, uh, working with Gaze in Space, um, a nonprofit organization who promote queer representation in science fiction and in the world, like the world of science, like at NASA and stuff. I mean, it's so cool. Um, and actually it's very, you know, very underrepresented in that in the world of science. Um, science fiction is getting better. You know, Star Trek have been doing, and I, you know, we we owe a lot to Star Trek, uh, but also some respect to them as well, because they they have been um waving the, the queer flag this this year, and I or these last few seasons of Discovery. I haven't watched the other ones yet, so I'm not sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, it is a great responsibility to to if you if you can create worlds out of nothing then create worlds that are going to be helpful to us going forward you know that we can learn from and we can we can aspire to be like um i think that's really important um but, but also you know as as penny said not not clubbing people around the head with it you've got to and i think seth is a genius in this respect and the orbital really works in the sense that you've got to create stories with enough room within the storylines for people to make up their own minds, for you not, for them not to feel like they're being preached at or dictated to, I guess. Yeah, that's been one of the best things about the Orville throughout all three seasons is when you do present the big topics that you have, it's never been preachy. It's always been, well, let's explore both sides of it. I mean, like this season, especially with the the Kalon weapon and the argument of well do we use it or do we not that was such a mm. great arguments on both sides that it was uh I love seeing what the show has explored up to this point uh yes. and I'm I'm hopeful to see more and so uh, I'm curious for both of you you know have you talked with Seth at all about what the the future may hold for Claire and Isaac I've talked to everybody that I can talk to <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, Mark, you just, you know, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I just feel, well, I'll just speak for myself. The Orville has so much more to be said, um, so much more to explore, uh, so many stories to start a conversation. Um, if we ended it, how we ended it, it would be sad, disappointing, but I, I think we did accomplish an awful lot, but I don't think I'm finished with the Orville, so the Orville can't be finished with me. That's how I feel. And I, and I wanna know what happens with Isaac. I mean, truly, come on, you're gonna have him helping, you know, finish raising these kids, maybe they're in college, um, maybe Claire, uh, as she pointed out to um, Isaac, you know, one day I, this flesh, I'm going to be old and aging and you will just be the same. I mean, dealing with things that people deal with, real issues. So um, I, I want to I, I wanna do more. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I feel like we've only just started. 
with this I feel like this season's really kind of up the game and we've all stepped up to meet it um you know whether it does happen or not is not up to us but um it's down to the fans it's down to the viewers and listen it's a very expensive show to make um which is pretty much I think why we haven't been renewed yet they have to really be sure that um it's it's money well spent I guess uh yeah I mean I want to do more let's do more and Kleisic of course like what a minefield there's so much there's so much fun to be had with with that they're married now like what does a what does a human artificial intelligence marriage look like I can I can imagine you having parties in our place and letting our our kids do whatever they want to do because you don't see any harm but then I see the all the all the other stuff that you know humans see and when oh, you yeah. know oh <laughs> I don't if we do do more I don't think you've seen the last time that Isaac has been told off by Claire I think he's <laughs> he's gonna get it in the neck a fair amount <laughs> well that's always the fun about about Klyzik, right is is it allows him the chance to learn and it allows Claire to also learn from him it's it's such a, a wonderful wonderful relationship to see on screen um oh and so since you do mention the viewership uh we did get the exciting news at comic-con that this is also coming to disney plus uh which should hopefully boost those numbers but i'm curious what that was like for you both hearing that news that it was getting you know yet another platform for people to watch on oh my gosh it you know uh i think hulu is just incredible uh but of course you want to expand the more people you want to expose as many people as you can possibly expose to the, the Orville. Uh, those who are watching already on Hulu and who have followed us from Fox and then Disney took over, um, it's been fabulous. I mean, just reading the comments and being able to interact with the fans has just been, I mean, off the charts, truly. Mm -hmm. So if they, they being the, the fans can invite others to watch it um, on a platform that's easier for them to watch it on. Why not? The more the merrier, bring, bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. Well, cause it's, it's only in the States that it's not been on Disney plus it, and the rest of the world, like here in the UK it's been on Disney plus for about a year and a half now. And I noticed as soon as it went on there, people, my friends would say, oh, I started watching The Orville because people have Disney Plus and particularly families have it for their kids. And I think this is the genius of it, that you're going to have parents picking up on The Orville. And whole ha I was in an elevator in San Diego and a, a guy was there with his family, wife, two kids. And he said, are you, are you, do you play Isaac on The Orville? I said, yeah. And he said, we watch it as a family. Um, and these two little kids, you know, were looking up at me and terrified. But they, um, I think that's a winning formula. If you can, if you can get whole families sitting down to watch a show, then um, jobs are good. And I think the move to Disney Plus in the states is just very promising. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like it's Disney showing that they believe in the show. I think the whole um, sci-fi uh, fandom um, is probably looking forward to introducing the Orville to their children, because mm -hmm. that's that's how the Star Trek was handed down. You know, your parents watched it and then they were excited about it. So you were watching it with your parents and then you had conversations about this. I mean, what a wonderful way to break the ice on topics that you may not know how to start, but mm -hmm. the Orville can start them for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing that that fan base grow uh, with its new home uh, at well, secondary home, I should say, at Disney Plus here in the States alongside Hulu. Um, now, before I let you both go, I am curious, did you have any particular moment or scene in this season that you would uh, call your favorite uh, of them all? Ooh. This season or this uh, final? Just, um... just this season. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, so do you want me to jump in while you have a thing? Well, I, I have so many. I think one of my favorite scenes was 
with a guest star. And I think it's because I was so excited to find out that Claire had a history and she was, you know, had a relationship with her professor. And I, I found myself being very excited about, maybe because it was a human. <laughs> you know. Rude. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Although I love everything that I've done with you, Mark, you know. But um, that and yes, the other one was when we were in the bed together, Mark. That was so exciting. Remember when we worked out and did all that? Oh, and yeah. that it was like, they shot it like this. That <laughs> was one of my favorite times too. Well, I read was topless scene and that sent me into a panicking spiral. Um, <laughs> the first thing we did after we shot that scene was eight donuts. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. <laughs> it was great. That's when you crafty you know when you could I really enjoy I mean I enjoyed the whole um emotion ship scene that was really fun to do with you but I particularly enjoyed our dancing I like that because we had to we had to we rehearsed quite a lot for that didn't we for that dance yeah and then and then filming it filming it was actually a pleasure because you when you film a scene over and over again until it's you don't even know what the hell you're thinking anymore um, it's it's hard, but actually filming a dance over and over again was really, really pleasurable, I thought. It was like being yeah. at the gym when you can't. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit. I, like liked it. I liked it too. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad that you had those so many amazing moments this season. I I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed for you both that we get that season four announcement because I, I I agree with you both. There's plenty more stories to tell and always great chatting with you both so thank you so much for taking the time thank, thank you. you i love your jacket <laughs> <laughs> thank you i love it too and uh hopefully you'll be seeing it and myself again when we talk in the future <laughs> awesome. all right thank have a you. great rest of your week